Time for bed, Billy, love. Billy. Billy! I'm getting something. Don't give over. The only thing you'll get from that is a crick in the neck. Now, stop playing with your cat's whisker and get to bed. Ah, crystal sets never were much cop anyway. Now, if we had a proper wireless, like this uh, McMichael three-valve job with uh, an Exide accumulator... Well, what's wrong with our old wireless? Well, that one there, it's knackered, that's what. <laughs> Hasn't worked for years. No, I meant apart from that. Oh, please, Andy. It's a big, wide, wonderful world out there, once you've passed Halifax. <laughs> and, and listening to the wireless is the only way of feeling a part of it. Cos nothing ever happens around here, nothing. Well, I've told you before, we can't afford a new wireless. And even if we could, I still wouldn't buy one. Why not? Because it's a well-known fact that the wireless is destroying the art of conversation. The what? The art of conversation. Now, shut up and get to bed. <laughs> Nothing ever happens around here. Nothing. Nothing ever will. What do you think you're at, you daft beggar? I nearly had an accident! safely, did you? Well, it's more than you deserve, you stupid great... Hello? Is this Scarborough? <laughs> well, uh, <clears throat> not unless the tide's gone out a long way. <laughs> then how did I... Ah, that's it. I was reading it upside down. We're just outside Lofthouse, right? Wrong. Wakefield. Wakefield, yes. As you'll gather, navigation's not exactly my strong point. <laughs> Flying neither, by the look of it. Beg pardon? He nearly took my roof off just before you landed. Oh, Lord, that close was I. Sorry. I was only trying to attract your attention. Well, he managed to do that, all right. Attract my attention? Why? Because I could see I was just about to run out of fuel and needed some help. Mr... Uh, Enshaw. Billy Enshaw. Sylvia Mason. How do you do? <laughs> Likewise. This is the first time I've been this close to an aeroplane. <laughs> Tipsy moth, is it? Tiger moth. 
Ah, oh, well, I knew it was some kind of moth. <laughs> I must have set you back a few, Bob. Oh, not me. The flying school. Look, uh, if you wouldn't mind dropping me at the nearest garage, I should be able to pick up some prats. Beg pardon? <laughs> prats petrol. Not ideal, but good enough to get me home. Oh, I see. Well, uh, I'm in no worry, and uh, neither is Mr. Heathcote. Mr. Heathcote? My passenger. <laughs> ah. So, uh, after you. Thank you. It can't be cheap. Learning to fly, I mean. Oh, it isn't. But my Aunt Ethel can afford it, and it was her idea for me to take flying lessons in the first place. She thinks every young woman should do something with her life, and she sees me as another Amy Johnson. She was a suffragette, you see. Amy Johnson? My auntie. She's also a bit batty. Live with her, do you? Ever since my parents died. I live with my auntie too, my auntie Ivy. But what's she like? Rather like your Aunt Ethel. Oh, a suffragette too, was she? No, but just as batty. <laughs> Up ahead on the left. On the right? The right, yes. You're right. Navigation's not your strong point, is it? Afternoon. We're looking for some prats. And you've come to the right place. <laughs> My son-in-law, for one. <laughs> He's prat for miles. You know exactly what I mean. Prats, I test petrol. Have you got any? I think we have a drum out back. What do you want it for? Oh, I see. Do your own cremations, eh? <laughs> Just get it. Five gallons, please. Why is she dressed like that? She's trying to break the world land speed record in a hearse. You did say Pratt, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> You've never been up in a plane before? No, never. Now's your chance. How do you mean? I mean, one good turn deserves another. Oh, no, I couldn't really. <laughs> Why not? Scared we'll end up in Bangkok. Oh, no, it's not that. I wouldn't mind if we did. Mind you, make a change from Pontefract. No, it's, uh, it's Mr. Heathcote. What about him? Well, I mean, I couldn't just leave him here all on his own. I'm sure he wouldn't mind. Oh, but I would. You see, he's in my charge, my hearse. It's a question of professional ethics. Well, there's a very short answer to that. <laughs> Why, eh? I'll be another little bit of that. Hello, champion! Hey, is that old shore back down there? What? Old shore, where I live. Hey, look, I can see the reservoir. Let's have a closer look. Hold on. Where is the lad? His dinner will be fit for naught. That you, Billy? Billy? Oh, hello, Auntie. Where have you been? You little dumplings who will be as hard as cannonballs by now. <laughs> and where's Mr Heathcote? In the back, drying out. <laughs> drying out? And what's that you're holding? Eh? Oh, uh, firewood. Firewood? Excuse me. What the heck's he got up to now? Well, certainly, Mrs Galloway. Yes, but would you mind telling me why you want your husband buried in the municipal cemetery? Because he's dead. 
No, but I meant why the municipal cemetery? See, I would have thought that the new old Shaw Necropolis would have been much more suitable for a man like him. Yeah, and after all, it would be mixing with a much better class person. Yeah, well, oh, well, of course, it will be a little bit more expensive, Mrs. Galloway, but as you wish, Mrs. Galloway. The municipal cemetery it is. Bye. Tight fisted old faggot. <laughs> Billy? Oh, there you are. Which I plant Mr. Galloway on the cheap. Oh. <laughs> Going out, are you? Again? Well, if you must know. Yes. I'm off to watch a cricket match. Who with? Ernie Adfield. But you've always hated cricket. Ah, but this is different. Ernie said they're a sight to be old. What are? Freddie Attercliffe's googlies. <laughs> now, I, I must rush, because I shall miss the first ball. Ah, uh, but Billy, this... If the, uh, yeah. Oh, thump. Just one moment, please. <laughs> it's all right, Mrs Huntsworth. You can put your tape measure away. It's only me. Yeah, well, I'm sorry, Ernie, but you've just missed him. Oh. Any idea where he's gone? To meet you at the cricket ground. What the hell for? To have a look at Mr. Attercliffe's Googlies. <laughs> Beg pardon. Granted. Are you mobile? Well, I've got my combination, aye, but... That'll do. Ernie. What? Follow that hearse. <laughs> <laughs> What is this place? And who the heck's that? Well, whoever she is, she's not short of a few, Bob. The crafty little devil. She certainly is. What do you mean by that? Well, Billy has been known to say he preferred older women. <laughs> Not as old as that. Are you telling me that our Billy has become a gigolo? An old lady's fancy man? Well, it has been known, Mrs. Onsworth. In London, certainly. In Leeds, probably. But in Old Shaw, never. <laughs> Besides, our Billy isn't the type. It's too nice, too decent to... to... Billy! <laughs> Come out of there, you mucky little devil! <laughs> what the heck's that? Oh, look, look at that! No, it can't be. What is it? That, that's what I call making a getaway. Do you mean he's our Billy? In there? I have you really gone up in the world this time. Billy! Come down here at once! Do you hear me? At once! Before you fall out! Have another piece of cake, Ernie. Oh, Tom. Most kind. <laughs> Hello, Auntie. Uh, whatever happened to you and then, Ernie? I waited for hours outside the cricket club, but you never showed up. Perhaps that's because you never told me to be there. Didn't I? Oh, dear. What a pity. What a shame. You missed a very good afternoon's cricket. It wasn't the only one. You what? You heard. Anything wrong? <laughs> Come on, what's up? Happen you were, Billy, lad, this afternoon. Eh? You've been rumbled, Billy. Or should I say, Baron von Richthofen? <laughs> Baron? You followed me. You followed me to Sylvia's. Yes, and that is a good job we did. Oh, Billy, how could you? Risking life and limb and a thing like that. And with a woman old enough to be your grandmother. Oh, dear, dear, what are you talking about? Sylvia's only 26. 26? Rubbish. Perhaps she's prematurely aged. <laughs> you shut up, Ernie. Well, Billy. Out with it. Who is Sylvia? What is she? No, I shan't tell you again, Annie. 
Well? Well, look, Auntie, it's a very long story, but if you really must know, the woman you saw this afternoon was Mrs. Mason. Uh, that's uh, Sylvia's Auntie Ethel. And it wasn't Auntie Ethel that was driving the airy plane, it was Sylvia. You see, I I've just been helping her with her navigation, but, but don't worry, it'll all be over by next week. What will? The leads to Paris Air Race. <laughs> well, it's what she's been in training for, you see, and, well, it's Auntie Ethel's idea, and she's only doing it to please her. Leads to Paris? With you helping her with her navigation, she'll be lucky if she ends up in Stoke-on-Trent. <laughs> Couldn't agree more. That's why I've decided to go with her. Da. Uh, day? Hi. To Paris. Excuse me. I shall need my winter underwear. But, uh, yeah, but Billy. Billy. Billy! <laughs> this is all my fault. If I'd let him have his wireless in the first place, he would never have felt the need to fly off to Sodom and Gomorrah. <laughs> I thought he was going to Paris. What's the difference? I still don't see how you can stop it. Oh, don't you? Well, there's more ways than one of threading a camel through the eye of a cobbler's needle. You what? You heard. They're not answering the door. Oh, perhaps it's Miss Lader here, Trumpy. Oh, shut up, Bernie. <laughs> now, look, you wait here, and I'll go round the back. Mrs. Mason? Whom are you? The name's Unsworth, Mrs. of Jeremiah Unsworth and Co. I've come to talk about my nephew. Nephew? Yes. The... Hey, hold on. Don't I know you from somewhere? Oh, I very much doubt it. But it, it can't be. It is! It's little Ethel Hitchcock from Abattoir Street. <laughs> Abattoir Street? <laughs> Well, we used to go to Maggie Street mix infants together. Well, then, who, who are I? Becky Thump. It isn't. It is. I'm a Bay Henshaw from Viaduct Street. Well, I go to Bandley and back. Well, ah, the Billy Henshaw that's helping our Sylvia. He's my nephew, yes. Well, then, don't just stand there. Sit down. Have a cup of tea. Thank you. I can't get over it. After all these years. You know, the last time I saw you, you'd change yourself to the town hall railings as a protest against the lack of ladies' conveniences. Was it as long ago as that? <laughs> oh, it was. You went in for a lot of those things, didn't you? Public conveniences? <laughs> no. <laughs> protest meetings. Oh. <laughs> Except for when Harry Jowett took you behind the pickle factory. Oh. <laughs> I don't recall you doing much protesting then. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it is good to see you again. It really is. We had some hijinks in those days. <laughs> you remember Saturday night at the Alhambra? <laughs> oh, hot meat pie, half a pound of broken biscuits, <laughs> a lump of hokey pokey, and we still had enough change out of a tanner for our tram fare home. <laughs> no, I don't remember that. <laughs> No, come to think of it, I don't, either. <laughs> Still, you haven't done bad for yourself. I mean, nice house, nice clothes, and ashtrays without advertisements on them. <laughs> My late Arthur didn't leave me all this. No, but sure. He was taken away for it. <laughs> oh, he wasn't a bad man. Not really. Just tight as a duck's do oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds as though he was related to my Jerry Meyer. <laughs> 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 No, the only thing I really regret is we never had any children. But I do have little Sylvia, bless her. Uh, well, you won't have her much longer. What? Well, not if you keep on trying to make her another Amy Johnson. Keep yeah, but I'm only trying to help her to make something of herself. Just like you and me, if I'd given half a chance. Ah, but you see, love, she's not you. Nor me, for that matter. And according to our Billy, she's just not cut out to be a lady aviator. Well, why hasn't she said so? Because she knows it means so much to you. And she doesn't want to let you down. I see. Yes, that's Sylvia. Just like my Billy. Have another cup of tea. No, thanks. It'll be cold anyway. Tell you what. 
as this is our very first old girls reunion, how about marking the occasion in the traditional manner? Do you mean with that garlic liquor? Oh, I'm sorry, Ethel. It's a bit early in the day for me. <laughs> What time is it? The Auntie Ivy will be worrying herself sick. I'm sorry, Billy. I didn't mean to end up in Rochdale. I was aiming for Harrogate. It's no good. You'll have to call it off. I told you. I can't let Auntie Ethel down. Hey. Well, if it isn't the Rep Baron himself. What are you doing here? It's more what your auntie's doing that should concern you. My Auntie Ivy. Oh, heck. Come on. I never knew a cream soda cocktail could taste so nice. <laughs> no, that's a good gin. Gin. Or the vermouth. Vermouth. Yes. But not the cream soda. Oh, no. Not the soda. Well, that's all right. Because, as I say, it's a bit early in the day for me. <laughs> so this is where you are. Hello, Billy, love. <laughs> and you must be a little Sylvia. What have you been up to? Sorry about this, Mrs. Mason. Why don't you sit down and have a drink? Sylvia, pour our tea martinis for you and Billy. Martinis, <laughs> <laughs> auntie, you've been drinking. Only cream soda, Sylvia, love. Only cream sodas. <laughs> I said, what are you doing here? Having a very nice chat with a very old friend. So you've no need to worry about anything, so my love. No, because we've sorted everything out. I'm away, Ethel. <laughs> you don't have to fly to Paris if you don't want to, love. You really mean that? Well, of course I mean it. You don't have to do anything you don't want to do. I thought you knew that. But it's all arranged. The plane, the fuel, the entrance fees, it'll all be wasted. No, it won't. Come on, Ivy. Somebody else will fly it. Somebody else? Like who? Like me and your Aunt Ivy. <laughs> <laughs> all right. That's a good idea. You know me, Aunt Ivy has always wanted to fly. Hey, I didn't know your Aunt Ethel could fly a plane.